everybody, welcome to this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com where today we're going to use the calculations command, that's right, the vastly popular calculations command, to uh, do what I, well, to select what I consider an easy head of hair. And I'm, I'm somewhat joking, but I'm also somewhat serious because the, there's a lot of like frizz and it's not like just clean, athletic, you know, you can take the pen tool and select this head of hair. This would look really bad if you just took the pen tool and tried to cut all of this out. But it's easy because it's over a solid color background. Tomorrow's tutorial, we're going to do difficult hair over equally difficult backgrounds. We're not going to do like the most epically difficult hair in the world because there's some things that just at this point technologically are not quite possible as far as I know. But this is what I would consider an easy difficult head of hair, if that makes any sense. We're going to cut her out of here and we're going to drop her into this landscape and see what we can do with that. And it's actually pretty easy if you use the right techniques, calculations. Before we get into the tutorial though, I have an entire course on retouching images available over on tutvid.com. There's a link here in the video and a link down in the description to the video. If you buy it, it's like 27 bucks. It just supports the site. It's super cool. I appreciate it. If you don't have the money or you don't want to buy it, whatever, it doesn't matter to me. You're still going to get the free tutorials every day, and I still like you just as much. Don't worry about that. So let's talk about uh, getting her cut out. So here's basically how it works. I just drag the image into Photoshop or open it in Photoshop, and I go image calculations. Have you ever used calculations before? It's actually pretty powerful. Check this out. Um, so what we can do is, well, number one, calculations is a very... I don't want to say advanced. It is technically probably advanced, but it doesn't feel all that advanced. It's a more advanced way to blend channels to create complex selections and things of that nature. You can also sort of blend in textures. In fact, you can see I have a selection saved here where I've just already pre-selected her body using the pen tool, and the only thing I've got left to do is select the hair. And actually, maybe we should talk about this for a second before we jump into calculations and make the selection for the hair. When you're creating these very, very complex selections, don't think of it as, oh, I need to select everything in one fell swoop. Get the easy stuff, right? I mean, her arms, they've got good, smooth, easy to select a line. She's got this black dress on, and you can just go around with the pen tool or like the quick selection tool, maybe a little refine edge, right? A little refine edge action, and we can really clean that up. The problem is, you might be saying, hey, why not just use refine edge on her hair? Because refine edge... Refine Edge is great. It's amazing. It's really powerful, but there's it still doesn't do like as great, as amazing a job as a great channel-based selection. So we're actually going to be blending a couple of these channels together using calculations to create a selection. So enough of that jib jab. Oh, but but what I'm trying to say is go through, make a selection, and by the way, you save a selection as a channel by let's just say we have. Well, I'll, I'll use quick selection real quick. Let's just say we go ahead and create the selection. Uh, bada bing. There we go. Cool. We've got a selection, whatever. You right click with inside of it. Just choose save selection and name your channel, whatever you want. New selection. And there you go. It shows up. I'm going to delete that selection though, because I don't need it. I already have a selection that I know that I want. And the only part of her that I have left to select, as I can see, are all these edges here for her hair. I've just made a rough selection around the edges and I'm going to pick up the rest of that stuff with this calculation uh, selection here that we're going to do. So let's go back. I just select the RGB composite uh, channel. I'm going to go image calculations once more. So black is stuff that's not going to be selected. White is, is stuff that's going to be selected. Like this medium gray is like partially selected. Maybe you'll get like 50% opacity. I don't really care about all that. I care about this hair. And if you look at the hair, it's pretty solid black, which means that it's relatively intact as far as being pretty easy to select. In fact, if I just invert both of my, uh, my channels here, you can see that the hair gets converted to white. It looks super creepy. I understand. But the hair does get converted to white, and I know that white means it's going to be selected. I can easily paint all this in black here uh, when we create this new channel. I can paint over all this with black and it's never going to be selected. I can just keep what I have here in the hair area. Uh, we can try a couple different things. So let's try like green channel, masking the green or, or calculating or blending the green channel with the green channel and see what that looks like. That makes the hair even more white, uh, which is going to bring out even more detail, which is great. We're getting all this extra stuff under here. Um, we don't really need to worry about that though, because all that's going to be picked up with our selection that's selecting the rest of her body. So that's really not a problem. Uh, the black or the, the lightness in the corners of the image, we can just easily paint over that. That's no problem at all. Let's try the blue channel, see what that looks like. That's actually pretty cool because the background gets even darker, right? We get an even more uh, sharp and stark contrast between the edges of her hair and that black background. 
and that's actually not a bad selection. We can play around with some of the other blend modes. We can try color burn, see if that gives us a more, and you can see that's even more contrasting, but if we zoom in, I'm just using command and the plus icon, that would be control plus on the PC. We're starting to get kind of this fragmenting here on the, the frizzy ends of her hair. That looks really bad when it comes to a selection. You can see with multiply, we're maintaining a lot of that really, really fine detail. And don't worry, we got all these gray spots. I'm gonna, we're gonna take care of all that in a moment. Uh, the point is we're getting a ton of detail with multiply, that's really good. One of the other, um, or two of the other blending modes, I should say, that you're going to use here within calculations, and they're kind of only here within calculations and like the apply image command, as far as I know, are the add and subtract uh, blend modes. Let's try subtract in this case. I'm going to untick invert on the top channel, leave it on on the bottom channel, and you can see we actually get a pretty clean selection here too. Let's zoom in and check out the edges of her hair. Again, we're getting back to like, you know, wispy city again. You know, still not as good as that uh, multiply blend mode. So I think we'll probably hang with the multiply blend mode. It looks really bad right now. That's because we need to tick on invert for the top channel once more. Now that we've done this, we have our new channel. Uh, we don't have the new channel yet. We're, we're choosing that we're going to create a new channel. Go ahead and hit OK. We go to channels. You can see we have this alpha channel mask. Well, the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and grab, whoop, go ahead and grab the lasso tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just... I'm going to select all of this in here, right? Everything around her hair, right? Just like so. Do, 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 do. Maybe actually I'll even bring it out like that far, right? And then I'll go select, inverse the selection, and I can fill all of this with black. Actually, hold on. I can even add to the selection. I'm just holding down my shift key here. I can just add to the selection all of this stuff in here, right? Because we've got all that with our other selection. So I can fill all this with black. So I'm just going to hold down Alt, that'd be the, uh, uh, the uh, Option key on the Mac, Delete, Option Delete for the Mac, Alt Backspace for the PC, Command or Control D to deselect. All right, so now we just have the hair, right? We've isolated the hair. Now what we need to do is we really need this to be like solid white. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab the brush tool. This is a cool little trick. Pay close attention here. I'm going to right click. I'm going to make the size of my brush a bit larger. Maybe drop the hardness a little bit more. Make the size a little bit bigger. There we go. Cool. And now we're going to change the blend mode to soft light. What this is going to allow me to do is gently paint in it. Maybe I'll even change the, lower the opacity, reduce it to about 50. I can gently paint around the edges of her hair with this brush set to soft light. And it's really only going to affect the pixels that are already very, very dark. I don't want to get too super close, though, because I know some of those wisps of hair are relatively dark. All right. Now that we've done that, we flip our foreground and background color. So I'm painting with white. And I can then paint out with my white brush. All right. And just really fill out the hair. All right. In fact, I'm going to set my blend mode back to normal. And I'm going to paint this. Oh, set the opacity to 100. I'm going to paint this solid white all the way until I'm pretty close to that edge, right? Okay, so we're just going to be selecting this whole area here. Flip it. I'm going to paint black over that just so that's not in my way later on. All right, I'm going to go back to white. I'm going to set my blend mode back to soft light, reduce opacity back down to like 50. And I'm just going to touch up around the edges here a little bit. I just want to make sure that I'm getting good uh, edge continuity, as, as good as I can get. You can also use the overlay blend mode, by the way. It tends to be a little bit harsher, but it can also be, it can also sort of stick to those, those pixels a little bit better and not sort of bleed into the black. I'm going to hit the letter X to flip back and set black as my foreground color again. I'm going to go through and just knock out some of these sort of graying areas. All right, just like that, knock some of that down. And it's almost like magic when you're doing this because it just goes and it gets rid of the junk that you don't want and it preserves the stuff that you really kind of need. Boost the opacity back to 100, go back to normal blend mode. I'm going to zoom in here. There's this little like bit hanging down here. I'm just going to get rid of this because that's just sort of annoying and in the way. And I don't know if it's going to be that noticeable in the final finished result. All right, so now we have this alpha channel. We can double click it and name it hair or anything like that. Let's turn on the original image, and you can see there's the selection we're getting. It's actually not quite as perfect as I, was, as I would like it to be. And because I can see that some of that gray is showing through, I can either, I can tackle it now, or I can wait till we get it into the image. And maybe I'll wait until we composite this and show you how I kind of adjust after the fact. Let's go ahead and load the body channel as a selection. So we do that by holding down Command or Control. Click on that channel. You can see it's loaded as a selection. Hold down the Shift key and the Command or Control key and select the hair channel as well. We now have our selection 
uh, which is going to cut her out essentially. So I'm going to make sure my body and hair channels are shut off and make sure you click and select the composite RGB channel. Go back to your layers panel and choose to add a layer mask. So you can see there we go. We have masked away all of that background. We got all of her body out and also the hair. Let's drag this over onto our background image and see what we've got. Now you can see that this image actually goes pretty well with this background and the edges of the hair look really, really good. Um, in fact, I don't know that there's a huge amount of adjustment that I need to do at all other than you would probably want to go in with like a brush or a quick selection or something and just knock out the little areas that are left in there like that. I'm not going to waste your time with that because this is all about the hair selection. And you can see it's done a remarkable job of selecting what would have been a very, very difficult head of hair to select. And don't fool yourself. Using the quick selection tool and refine edge, you still would have had big problems selecting a head of hair uh, like this. So using calculations, we can go and very, very quickly select the head of hair like this. Now, before I let you go, I'm going to show you, I, I promise I'll show you how I kind of tweak and adjust this once I get it into place. And let's say maybe there's a little bit too much blue down in here from the original background, right? From that background, you can just select the layer mask, grab the brush tool, and again, set the brush to, you guessed it, soft light or overlay. I'm going to reduce the opacity again to like 50%. I'm going to paint with black because if I hold down my alt or option key and I click on my layer mask, it's going to load that, that channel so I can just see the black and white of the layer mask. I can make my brush a little bit bigger, right? Right click. Now I'm painting with black. And what I can do is just kind of click a couple times around the edge and I'm working here in the mask. Hold down alt or option, click on the mask. I can see my finished product there. And I can just go around the edges just like this and just kind of tweak and adjust where it maybe needs to be painted away. Or if more hair needs to come in, switch your foreground color to white and paint over the hair to kind of thicken up these edges, right? There's nothing wrong with that either. To bring back that detail and the fullness there for the edges of her hair. So you can see, if I wasn't explaining this and going through all of the calculation stuff, this would literally have taken less than like three or four minutes to make this entire cutout and go from having an image that has all that background to an image here that is just composited in and looks as just about as close to flawless as you can get. So don't sleep on the calculations command. It is an amazingly powerful feature for creating very complex channel-based selections. And like I said, this was an easy head of hair to select. And you can see it actually was relatively easy and we got a great, great result. So for calculations and for channel-based, easy to select heads of hair that are still not quite easy, but somewhat difficult, but still uh, easier than a lot, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodds and Tutfid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.